If you guys are not noticing, we are witnessing the making of a major European rivalry in Real Madrid versus Manchester City. In the past few years, this fixture has given us the most entertaining matches of the tournament, and this year was no different. So in this video, I won't break down the whole match. I'd rather discuss a few points which I believe are important and are not talked about as much. So without any further ado, let's begin our video. Now it was a hard-fought win for Madrid. They had to suffer a lot. City were relentless and did almost everything a team can do to break a low block, which obviously was not enough. Now the narrative in the media is Madrid parked the bus and played the haram ball, and City were unlucky to get knocked out of the quarterfinals. Listen to this clip. They just I mean, me. I mean, let's be honest. They won it. They won it because all of the things. I mean, I, I mean, I did we watch the same game? They got battered. And we can we can we can yeah. talk about oh if he if he didn't play or he didn't play or he didn't play or he didn't no, no. play. Talk about that. I, well, how about we talk about I, what happened? They got battered and in, in, in football terms they got battered, but from a defensive point of view, every single one of them gave their heart and soul. Right. We are of course talking about Madrid's defence, but in a passive manner. Like their plan from the start was to sit back until the end of the match and hope that they'd win in the penalties. But that's not it. If you ask me, Ancelotti and Real Madrid players should be given maximum credit for their performance. Because firstly, even if they wanted to play a low block, doing that against a Manchester City team at their home is one of the hardest thing in football because they'll somehow find a way to score a goal and win a match from there. Secondly, we have to understand that Madrid started the match wanting to press and score on the counter. Now City of course were able to play through their press, but Madrid were clinical on the counter and that's how Rodrigo scored. And not only that goal, but a few moments later, Vinicius dragged the whole City defence towards him at the left side and passed the ball to Carvajal, who failed to score, which would have easily been a goal if it were Rodrigo or he passed the ball back to Vinicius. And right there, Madrid could have been 2-0 up within the first 20 minutes. So the point is that this narrative that Madrid parked the bus and were lucky that City did not score is not right. Because the way Madrid defended after scoring that goal was part of the plan. And if City were to score or take the lead, I believe Madrid had enough to change gears and be more of a threat in terms of their attack. Now thirdly, this has already been said enough, but I would like to again remind you that Madrid was not playing with their starting centre-backs, starting goalkeeper and their best defensive midfielder. Now tell me, is there any team which without their most important players in the defence would dare to defend like that against Manchester City? I don't think so. Even a team like Man City, if they played without Robin Diaz, Kyle Walker, Rodri and Anderson, they won't be able to play on the same level. So criticising Madrid for playing a defensive block against the best attack without their most important defensive players, I don't think is the most ideal thing to do. Which brings me to my next point. Yes, City were a threat without a doubt. They were making constant effort to score a goal and were tactically drilled to be on the front foot. And all of us thought sooner or later they will score a goal and from there on they'd be able to dominate the tie like they did last year. But the quality of Madrid's defence was better than the quality of City's attack, if that makes sense. Yes, City had some decent efforts initially and came close to scoring, but Madrid was a team on a mission. Every Madrid player knew what they had to do without the ball. And City were trying, they came close, but Madrid had answers for everything. They did not allow them to get through their last line or take shots from distance. They didn't allow their wingers to make crosses or find the players like Haaland easily. When Madrid had the ball, City players were pressing and they were winning the ball as well. But whenever City was attacking, which was most of the time, they had no clear opportunities allowed by Madrid defence. And it's not just me saying, listen to what Thierry Henry said. I, I think uh, at the end of the day, on, uh, Man City had the ball and they were pushing and this and that, but the way they played defensively around Madrid is just astonishing. And I know, yes, they had watched on a target that was the goal, but City don't have a lot, just that crossbar and that was about it. So never easy to defend a team like City at their home and Madrid did that for the whole match and more. Now the third point. I said this in my preview video of this match that Man City is the toughest opponent but Ancelotti is someone who learns from his mistakes and he's not going to lose a Champions League tie twice in a row by the same team. And even after the first leg, I said and that's because I trusted Ancelotti to do the right thing. Now if you remember, Ancelotti said this in the pre-match conference that we'll win the match not because of our quality but because of our attitude. And after the match, he said this was the only way a team like Man City can be beaten in their home. So what was it exactly the team did? Well, it was scoring the goal before they start defending. And once they started defending, they defended their heart out. They never lost concentration and that was the attitude that Ancelotti talked about. See, Manchester City right now, man for man, is the best team in the world for me. And I guess most football watchers will agree with me on that. 
They play in a league which is arguably the best in the world and have won five Premier Leagues in the last six years. They even won the treble last year and has been considered the best team in the world for past few years. So naturally, one would assume that they would have been dominating the Champions League as well. But they have just won it once and that was the last year. Remaining four years, they have been eliminated by Chelsea and Lyon once and again by Real Madrid twice. Now City is not just any other average club having some good seasons. From their stadium to their management to the players to the manager, they don't lack anything in any department and also have funds with practically no limits. So the point is, people cannot be like City can be beaten using this style or that tactic. If you are to beat this team, one has to either create a team that has the best attackers in the world or you do what Ancelotti did. He of course took into account what happened at Etihad last year and prepared well for this game. Now Madrid is a pragmatic team but normally they dominate their opponents. But this time they were not trying to show that they can press or build from the back. They wanted to play on the counter, they did that and scored. After which they defended with everything they had. The players showed that attitude which Ancelotti spoke about. Now yes I'm sounding like it was a clean sheet for Madrid which of course was not the case. City scored a goal which was not the most attractive one as the ball fell to De Bruyne and there was some luck involved. But you see if it were any other team apart from Real in that stadium which was as loud as it can be that team would have crumbled after that goal. But Ancelotti demanded a structure which the players maintained without making any mistake. They held players like Phil Foden, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, Jack Grealish, Erling Haaland. They didn't even gave them any room for a shot. The best attack in the world was restricted to just a few good attempts. Now of course they had the ball and tried really hard but bar a few attempts there was nothing special from City. They look like they are passing the ball dangerously and in the end because they couldn't find a way they had to force a corner every time and it was the same thing again and again. The Madrid players knew they had to suffer and they didn't shy away from that for a single moment. Ancelotti was able to instill those tactics in his players but Guardiola could not come up with something to break Madrid's defense. Now just a reminder that if you found the video interesting so far you can like it and consider subscribing. It would mean a lot for a small YouTuber. And now to the final few points. They use this term for Real Madrid that they have the UCL pedigree or they have this Champions League DNA and that's what makes them special in this competition. And being a Real Madrid fan, these are my thoughts about this topic. For me, football is the best sport in the world and Champions League is the best football competition there is. Because this is the only tournament where the best teams get a chance to face each other. There is no other tournament where we can see these legendary clubs fight against each other every year. And because the best teams play against each other, the winner is decided by very small margins. A small mistake made by a player and his team would be out of the Champions League. There is no margin of error. Forget about winning, there are many legendary clubs who are yet to reach the final of this competition. And then there's Real Madrid, who have won UCL for a record 14 times. That's double the amount of trophies won by the second highest winning team AC Milan. And Madrid has not always been the team that one can say has been the best in the world or played the most attractive football every time they won this trophy. Now of course they have dominated the UCL many times, like recently when Bale, Benzema and Ronaldo used to run riot in the attack and Cruz, Modric and Casemiro didn't allow any other team any time on the ball. So they have won this competition many times in a dominant manner. And that's a hopeful target for many teams. They want to create a project which can ideally make their team the best in the world and they can compete for the best competition and win it, maybe dominate for a year or two. Which Real Madrid did. They won it when they were the best team in the world. But the point is they have also done it when they won the best. They managed to go through a round after round, beating one good team after the other and in the end lifting the UCL trophy. Now if it happened once or twice, it's a fluke. But when it's happening again and again, it's not fluke or luck. It's like a pattern. They have won this competition sometimes by just sheer dedication, by wanting it more than their opponents. And when people say that Madrid was lucky to win this, that annoys me. I can right now discuss many matches where the team showed their dedication, that willingness to win. But then this video would be about those matches. So we'll take this match as an example. Pep Guardiola after the match came out and said that KDB and Haaland asked to be substituted. Now they know that the match could go to penalties and you being the best penalty takers of your team asked to go out, that would never happen with Madrid players. You saw Carvajal, he was literally melting in the game. He had cramps in both his legs and when his lungs were about to come out of his mouth, that's when he was replaced. And this kind of commitment the players have shown time and time again. So now the question is, the players are not the same, the managers are not the same. So how do they do it? And I have a reasoning for that and I'll again use an example to explain it. They say there's a way to Madrid's batch. It's like a player becomes more responsible wearing the Real Madrid kit. Now I know that sounds crazy and that's what I used to think. But now that I've watched them winning the impossible so many times, I've started believing. I believe in that weight of the jersey. First of all, they have players of quality. Players who already believe that they can beat any team in the world. Then they recruit players with proper mentality who can handle the pressure of playing for Real Madrid. Let me take Valverde as an example. He was a rather unknown kid who was brought in from Penarol and played for Castilla before he joined the first team. And long story short, it came to a choice between Valverde and Marcos Lorente. One of them was supposed to be on the first team and the other was supposed to be sold. And Lorente had a lot of credit at that time. He was an academy player touted to be one of the best Spanish young players. His father and grandfather played for Real Madrid 
and his great uncle was Paco Gento, a Real Madrid legend. Still, Valverde was chosen by Zidane and Real Madrid staff. Why? Because they saw that Real Madrid DNA and that attitude which we all saw later. And now we cannot imagine Real Madrid without Valverde or Valverde playing for any other team. And players like these are the reason why Real Madrid play with that dedication. A recent example would be Jude Bellingham. Now before Real bought him, Enzo Fernandez was a fresh World Cup winner. With great performance, people said waiting for Bellingham over a chance to buy Enzo is stupidity. But look at them now, what Bellingham does and the way he carries himself. Can you imagine Enzo Fernandez doing that? So basically what I'm trying to say is, they don't do this for nothing. There's a method to this team's madness. So yes, Real Madrid have that Champions League pedigree and they have created it over many years. Now I also wanted to talk about the players but the video is already too long so I'm not gonna do that. But Lunin, I thank you. Thank you for everything you did in that game and KDB, what a player you are. I am jealous that a player of your quality do not play for Real Madrid. And now with that, I'll end this video. But I have made one where I've talked about why Ancelotti is the most suitable manager for a team like Real Madrid. You can watch that here. Like the video, share your thoughts in the comments, I'll respond to every single one of those. Subscribe to Football Ledger and see you on the next one. Ciao.